like to welcome you to our workshop today on data analysis with Excel. Just to give you a little bit of information about myself, I have a Bachelor of Commerce degree and I've worked with Excel for years in business and at uh, my work here at the university. For those of you who are UVic students, faculty, and staff, just be aware that you can download and install a UVic licensed version of Microsoft Office for your computer. And this can be helpful, especially if you have an older version of Excel on your computer. The instructions in the activities uh, for our workshop today are for the latest version of Excel. So uh, yeah, if you have any problems with the activities, you might want to download and install the latest version of Excel so that you can more easily follow along. Here's a quick outline of what we're going to cover today. I'm going to talk for about 10 minutes to orient you to the workshop, and then most of our time together will be spent hands-on working through um, activities in Excel so that I'm here to answer any questions or give you any assistance you might need. This is a self-paced workshop. Uh, we do this because we realize that people come into the workshop with different levels of experience and ability with Excel. So if you have lots of experience, you can jump ahead to the things that will be most beneficial for you. And if you're new to Excel, that's perfectly fine as well. You can start at the beginning and uh, work your way up through the activities. As well, I realize that some people like to use Google Sheets, uh, especially if you're collaborating with people. Uh, and most of the activities today will work just fine with Google Sheets. All of the functions work pretty much in, a, in the identical form. The only two activities that are quite a bit different in Google are the pivot table and the macros. So Google Sheets does have equivalent tools, but they work quite a bit differently. So the handouts for Excel won't work with Google Sheets for macros and pivot tables. So the first activity is the Excel basics and data cleaning. So if you have experience with Excel, you'll probably just want to skim through this. There may be some data cleaning uh, activities that would be new to you or might be helpful for you. And data cleaning is so important because your research results depend on having good, clean underlying data. You'll also learn how to filter data and find and replace data as well. Next activity is introduction of functions, which can be a huge help when doing preliminary analysis as well as final analysis of your data. Uh, you'll be able to work through some key functions like sum, count if, vlookup, concatenate if. And don't worry if you don't know what these functions means because the activity will cover these and introduce them to you and where they're most commonly used and where they might be most helpful for you. Next activity is for statistical functions. And if you're working with research data, this is really an important activity for you. You'll learn how to do various statistical analyses, including hypothesis testing using average, median, mode, standard deviation, kurtosis, and many, many more. Next activity is charting, and this is where you can make your results more accessible and easier to digest if done properly. You can also tell a story by highlighting the summarized data that's most important to you and, and, and to what you're trying to communicate. So for example, the chart on the left is not, not bad. It's well laid out, I think, and conveys the information. But the chart that I've just put up makes it much easier to quickly glance at and see what the trends are and, and tells the story that uh, I'm trying to convey. Pivot tables are also a great tool to help you summarize and consolidate data. So for example, if you have a spreadsheet of uh, workshop attendance data, like I have on the left here, you can easily see how many workshops were held and the total number of participants in the workshop. So for example, on the left, I've highlighted some DSC intro workshops. And then on the right, you can see that it's consolidated those workshops into one line item. And in the workshops column, it it shows you that there were four of those workshops and the total attendance or the sum of the attendance for those four workshops was 137. So it's a, again, a great tool for summarizing and consolidating data. Next activity is automation with macros. And this is really great if you're doing tasks repeatedly with similar sheets. 
uh, or similar types of information. So for example, I have weekly or monthly spreadsheets that are created and something that I need to do with them every month is sort them and then do a sum. So what I can do is create a macro that will sort the spreadsheet, uh, in this case by total attendance, and then create a total uh, cell so that I know the total number of workshop participants for that month. And again, it doesn't take me too long to do this, but with a click of a button I can do it, which over time will, will save me a fair bit of, a bit of work. And then the, the next activity and the last one is data dashboards. And this allows you, especially if you're doing a large research project or if you're running a business, it allows you to uh, have visualizations of key metrics that you want to track. So in a business, often you'll have sales or uh, cold calls or, uh, or if you're manufacturing, manufacturing output. You can pull from the data in sheets in your spreadsheets and create a summary that helps you know how your business is doing. In a research project, in a longer research project, it might be number of interviews done, uh, key findings that are coming out of your interviews that you'll, you can see the trends over time if you're doing interviews or surveys over a period of time. So this can be really helpful. So that's it with the activities. One thing that we offer for this workshop and most of our other workshops are uh, badges that are cryptographically signed and linked to the learning outcomes for this workshop that you can put on your LinkedIn account or your uh, resume. It seems that co-op students particularly find these helpful. This is completely optional, but if you'd like to earn a badge that you could again, like I said, put on your LinkedIn page or your, um, or your resume, uh, all you need to do is at the end of the workshop, email the spreadsheets for statistical functions, macros, and digital dashboards to me, and then I will, um, I will send you a badge in a couple of days, along with instructions on how to add it to your LinkedIn account. So it's hands-on time now. Um, if you go to the bit.ly link there, it will open up our master activity. This is the document that has links to all the activities. This is the pre-workshop activities and videos up top here, and then highlighted in yellow are the activities for the workshop. And again, I strongly suggest you start with Excel basics and then work your way through the other activities. I'll show you what the Excel Basics handout looks like. It works you through step by step. And again, if you're familiar with Excel, uh, you, you can skip over some of these initial ones that are meant to orient people who are, are pretty new to Excel. And near the bottom, we get to the data cleaning and data valid validization activities. What we recommend you do, though, is uh, we've made these act these uh, handouts quite narrow, and we recommend you drag, make your your browser quite narrow so that it is as narrow as possible, yet still allowing you to see uh, the handout. So you can scroll through it and then open up Excel. And I'm just getting Excel open here. Open up a blank worksheet. And then what we recommend you do is drag it as far over to the left as possible and then make it as wide as you can, but still being able to see the activities, or, uh, the instructions for the activities. So you can scroll through there and work on it on the other side. So there you go. Uh, hopefully you'll find this workshop useful. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please let me know. You can always email dscommons at uvic.ca if you'd like any support if you're a UVic students, faculty, or staff, enjoy.